Hey everyone, I'm John Lynn, the founder and chief editor at Healthcare IT Today, and we're excited to bring you another in our series of interviews with top leaders in health IT. And our guests today are Gotham Chowdhury, he's CEO at Medvice.ai, and Sean Ross, COO at Medvice.ai. Welcome, guys. Hey, thanks for having us. Um, Happy really to be excited here. Excited to be here. Yeah, I'm. Uh, you know, it's a part of our series of ambient clinical voice interviews and kind of featuring all this. You know, all the companies in this really exciting space, I, I've often said it's my favorite space right now, uh, there's something exciting happening. But before we dive into your product and uh, and your solution, uh, Gautam, why don't you start out? Tell us a little bit about yourself and Medvice.ai. Uh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, so prior to this, like uh, I was in uh, four different startups, have experience building products from zero to one. Um had great success building products, scaling them to like million users. Uh, so at one point, like I, I I started talking, I started thinking, why not start something on my own? Had uh had my whole family is filled with doctors, like my parents' side, my <laughs> wife's side, like everyone are doctors. Yeah, that's Indian, right? You have to be a doctor or a or doctor. An engineer, right? If not, <laughs> you're, you're out. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> you're a doctor or you're an engineer. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um we started seeing, I, I started looking into this healthcare space, uh, seeing, we saw that it's like, like there's a lot of uh, efficacy problems and like inefficiencies, inefficiencies. Uh, so we tried doing, I started reading about it and that's when I met Sean as well, uh, like back in May of 2023. Uh, I met him on a online forum um, of startups. Um, but prior to him, I met him a few other people as well, but when I met him, it was great. Like it's like we hit off immediately. Uh, Sean brought in his uh, thought processes along with, along with his, uh, like he bought his thought processes and he's like he built a plan before he met me. That's kind of like <laughs> started triggering it. Like it's like oh yeah, this is great. Like someone was like ready to put in a lot of work along with me. So yeah, that's how it's like that's how it started. The idea so, started. Forming. Very interesting, Sean. How how about yourself? Yeah, so I, um, you know, I've just been loving the past nine years working on this project. I, prior to this, I did not work in healthcare, but very familiar with kind of the pain points. And because of that, and, and Gotham and I not working in healthcare, we always um, needed kind of that guiding light. But I had um, had some personal you know, knowledge um, with uh, with my wife about the healthcare systems, and we uh, started talking about pain points, and um, and then so we started Medvice, where we knew we wanted to bring our skills and kind of AI, computer science into a clinical setting, and uh, and we've just kind of been on this wild ride ever since. Awesome. We got them. Dive in a little bit more. So you, you met each other. What's the story of going from meeting each other, caring about healthcare? You know, obviously the family perspectives from both of you uh, to you know to then developing the product and coming to market. Sounds good. Uh, yeah. So whenever like I used to meet my family uh, or friends, especially like during the weekends, they used to talk about like how much time they spent away, uh, like not working and doing all this. Uh, EHR stuff and filling out information and like dealing with all the billing stuff. Like they spend a lot of time uh, away from doing, uh, apart from like treating patients. Um, so I started thinking like, like now AI is becoming better and better. Every day you get, the AI is becoming more powerful. How do you get AI into healthcare settings? Um, so I started like obviously interviewing a lot of uh, doctors, family friends who are doctors, uh, started understanding their pain points, mm, started like building a small, small uh, like started like formulating what what could be possible in uh, healthcare space. Uh, that's when I met uh, Sean. Mm. Sean also, like the first time I met him, he came with like a fully prepared uh, <laughs> a presentation. Uh, he was ready. Like he was like, oh yeah, this is, he was thinking about in this lines what we could possibly bring into the table. That actually was like interesting to me. Like I was like, wow, uh, someone was like thinking 
thinking as well as thinking differently from what I was thinking. So the next day we we decided to just form the company. Uh, wow. <laughs> we incorporated the company the next day and then then we started like getting in uh, people like we got a, a chief medical officer his name is john uh, he he started giving us ideas on like what what he started giving ideas and he started like uh, telling us the problems with uh, healthcare he was one he's he's been in healthcare for the last 40 years uh, mm -hmm. he owns some clinics in north carolina and florida and uh, that's where it started. Um, Interesting, Sean. What what's your side of the story? You know, you brought. I guess you were searching for a co-founder. Is that is that? The yeah, you know, well, already? just kind of looking for the the next thing. So I've always been um, kind of a serial entrepreneur. After you know, spending um, a good a bit of time in in the corporate side of business. Um, and I was prepared to kind of start something already in the medical field um, around um, around health. And I um, Gotham and I met and, and like he said, I kind of just came ready, um, ready to go, ready to to kind of hop on the same thing um, that he was thinking. Um, and when we launched the product in may we originally you know we're looking at some of the problems being lack of care lack of um lack of care um affordable care um but then when we started to talk to doctors um and get more feedback that's when we kind of learned about the huge documentation problem um but but we um, we knew that wasn't enough to kind of build our product. Like uh, having documentation tools have been around for for twenty years, right? Um, and and scribes and um, any sort of transcription tools. It's nothing new. But if we could increase the accuracy, and then if we could take it a step further, and um, and bring maybe a, a revenue or an efficiency component for doctors. So they're not have to cognitively think, oh, um, has this uh, patient gotten this um, test done already? Let me look through the past 30 records. Or, oh, I need to um, ask the patient um, if they feel safe at their home at night, according to CMS. Right? Those are kind of questions that you have to maybe not be on the top of a doctor's head, but you're able to provide with AI. So that's why we we kind of wanted to build a tool that, that's more than just transcription for us and, and more than an ambient scribe. It's something that's helping doctors do what they do best. And and um, it stops, it starts with uh, eliminating the being a data entry kind of person. Interesting. So how do, does your solution compare to, you know, there, there's a dozen plus, you know, in the space now. Yeah. Like yeah. No, they're, they're right. hopping, they're, they're popping yeah. up and a lot of the EHRs are kind of um, getting into the space as well. Yeah. So I how think, did your solution compare? What's similar? Yeah. What's different? Yeah. What, well, what's similar is we're all kind of listening to the patient and the provider have that conversation there's a lot of variety on what sort of documentation people are providing. Some of the um, some of the systems are just doing maybe a soap note and a summary. And for um, in a lot of settings, that's all that's needed. You need the soap to submit to funders, and uh, and you want that summary before you review. Um, we want to get capture as much documentation as we can um, going from, you know, physical examination to prescription to soap notes and summaries um, to vitals. Um, and then we're going a step beyond that and we're providing ICD and CPT codes. Um, so that's just taking more clicks off from the doctors. A lot of times the doctors know what they're you know, five CPT codes that they're billing are. Um, 
you know, sometimes they even have two CPT codes and it's not too hard for them to remember what those are. But in a lot of settings, they might have 20, they might have 30 or they want to, you know, bump it up to a level four um, from a level three. So we're finding out what's that missing documentation. What what question do you need to ask? What why can't you build this CPT code and using um kind of our, our internal algorithm to, to figure that stuff out. So that's one of the biggest differences that, that we're doing um, for doctors. We, we want them to walk in the room, press record, speak to their patient, you know, give eye contact, do what they normally do, treat the patient, press save visit, walk out of the room, be done, and not have to spend the next hour kind of looking at their notes. And uh, I, I briefly touched on it before, but we we also kind of have a, a, a Q and A ability. So maybe you don't remember what the um, one in a hundred you know um, patient visit you know is about, and what these symptoms might be, um, or what a disease might be, or what the um, you know, just any sort of medical question, if you want to question um, the, you know, you want to question what, a, what a, if you're allergic to a certain type of drug, if you want to look at prior patient data and question it, we, we want to just give everything as hands-free as possible. And that kind of just is defined in our roadmap as well. It's just, we want to bring AI solutions for doctors and, and just be more than a, an ambient scribe interesting Adam, what would you add and uh and let's also talk about more of the workflow for the clinician that you know you talked about you know pushing record is that on a device is that on a desktop is it integrated you know like do they do it from the hr you talk to us about that workflow as well yeah. adding to like uh, adding to whatever sean said like we're actually uh building our own data structure data structure which is our proprietary algorithm for uh, CPD and ICD code generation, um, getting the accuracy as high as up as like 97, 98% of the okay. time. Right now, doctors also like end up having 20% of the claims rejected on a regular basis, like 20% of the claims rejected, right? So with this, with this AI coming in, you might take that person to like 5% of the claims rejected, but that's still like saving a lot of time. It's not the time of doing the CPD ICD codes only. It's about like the time after that, right? Like it's like you submit these claims. If it rejected, if it gets rejected, you're waiting for months together to get it like passed through. Um, sure. Absolutely. Or if you're missing the wrong documentation to justify yeah. that code, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. So right now we are a web app uh, and a mobile app uh, soon to be, uh, we are like getting the mobile app as well. So. Web app, like you, as when you, when the patient walks into the room, the doctor just clicks on the patient and he starts recording the uh, conversation. Uh, and, and doctor does whatever he does the best. And if he has a certain rest of review of systems, he says the review systems, like it's all right. So it fills up the documentation for whatever is good. And he can just have a regular conversation with the doctor or patients. Uh, and our AI will describe everything and also like pick up what is important. Like you can, talk about something which is like not relevant to the case and our AI like obviously doesn't take that into consideration and picks up what's important and puts it into a format that doctor needs and uh, this information in turn can be pushed into their EHR uh, so if they have a certain template that they're following in the EHR we'll push into that particular uh, like columns and um, gotcha. so and is we, this fully automated with technology or are you using some humans in the background Right. It almost feels like an outdated question since I think everyone's going fully automated, but <laughs> let's hear your approach. Yeah, yeah. right now it's fully automated. Uh, we are going fully automated uh, with this uh, generation of speech and pushing it to HR. All these things can uh, are automated, but in case, yeah, that, that's what we are doing currently with all our, uh, currently with all our doctors on the platform. Uh, and why we bought in the mobile app is like some doctors are not comfortable, like, walking with the laptop or an iPad inside the room and starting the conversation. And sometimes what happens is like laptop might like, like 
go into sleep mode or something like that so they were like it's more comfortable having a mobile app so now like we are coming with a mobile app where doctors just walk into the room start recording the conversation don't worry about anything end of is end the conversation and boom you have your uh, data field in your ehr and um, all the conversations recorded yeah, yeah. 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 and we we've, we've um we've thought about the the process too we know a lot of people are more comfortable so um you need to be 100% right um when when the settings are, are are on the line you know depending on on what kind of clinical visit it is so if a doctor does want a human in the loop like the old traditional models um we've said we've set up kind of an admin view where there could be a human in the loop on the back side so you know visits created visits generated you're good to go but before we push it to your EHR, if that's what you want to do or copy paste, um, we can have a human in the loop, double check everything, make sure um, everything's looking good, and then push it over. Because, um, you know, AI is, is, is pretty awesome, but um, you don't, you know, some doctors can't afford any, you know, to, to sit there and, and, look at the notes and double check it for, for 20 seconds. Um, they need that uh, note to be hundred percent correct stat. Right. And, and so we'll, we'll put a human in the loop to, to finish it off. That's interesting. Yeah. And when it comes to the mobile app, I've heard uh, microphones are better on, on cell phones than they are <laughs> both desktops, laptops, et cetera. So it's an interesting part of the evolution. You know, you talked a little bit about EHR integration. Talk to us about how you're approaching that and pushing it to it. Does it work with all EHR? Do you have specific integrations with some, you know, how are you doing that? Maybe Gotham, you can start. Uh, for sure. Uh, at this point, like, obviously we try to work with all the EHRs, which have a, uh, Fire integrate a fire setup uh, already done. In case they're a little older, it's a little bit more hassle because all EHRs are obviously different. I mean, if it's a single, like if you take up like Epic, they have like so many implementations of EHRs. Or like if you pick up like any any EHR has like so many other variations of it, and everything is like slightly different. Uh, but in at the end of the day, like everything is like uh, API, and we are able to we we can integrate with most EHRs. Uh, uh, which have like the HSL standards or the fire standards. So that's kind of the, uh, in, in, a, in short, we work with all users. Yeah. Gotcha. Anything else you'd add, Sean? Yeah, I, I think um, we're starting to see a little bit of a restrictive movement. It's funny. We have these laws passed um, to open up data, yeah. but like I was talking about before, EHRs are all saying, hey, we can put in an ambient scribe too. Um, so we're seeing a little bit of a restrictive side from some of these um, legacy companies saying, well, why are you trying to integrate or, or why are you trying to push data? So um, it's becoming a, a little more challenging on saying, um, yeah, we're fine with you to push and pull. Um, we built it so you can, and, and we have had success with, with a few EHRs. Um, the, uh, the interesting thing is if you, um, if you ask an, an EHR and say, Hey, I'd like to, um, interact with you and push and pull my data for, kind of this uh, documentation side, there might be a little restriction. But if you say, hey, we're integrating and um, the main component is our ICD CPT side, they're all for it. They're ready to go because that's, you know, at the end of the day, that's their bread and butter is, is RCM. Yeah, that's really interesting. How about from the clinician perspective, what's kind of your been your experience with clinicians? Like, what do they have to change? You know, we've heard, you know, obviously in this series that they have to articulate what they're thinking and what they're seeing, right? Obviously, it can't right, be right. If they're yeah. not doing that. And talk to us about your onboarding process too. You know, how do you onboard a new clinician? Do you just throw them into the yeah. wild recording or is there a training process? You know, how do you approach onboarding? Yeah. 
Yeah, so we, we um, if they just want to test this out, so we have a, kind of a Medvice light module that they could just sign up without speaking to us and then just test it out and, you know, kind of have a little bit of prompts, hey, press this button here, um, or most people have been able to figure it out and they could kind of just go into the wild. If someone wants to sign up for an account with uh, essentially more than one doctor, a hospital account, we call it, then they need to talk to us. And we generally have been giving them a demo anyways and showing them how everything works. In terms of how a doctor changes their practices, um, we originally had it set up with no sort of macros, no sort of normals, anything like that. One physician said, well, I use, use my standards for a lot of things. Um, so we started implementing something like that. Um, but then we started to come up upon customers who were previously using, um, you know, legacy uh, Nuance One or DAX, um, and they used a lot of shorthand macros. Um, so it's possible for us to kind of take those shorthand macros and um, implement it. So, okay, you say this, this, and this, it's going to spit out X, Y, Z. Um, it, it takes a little bit more work. And I think once doctors realize that they don't need to be so shorthanded because they're not dictating anymore, they're just having this conversation and they're going about their practice, we might see those requests kind of change in the future and maybe even see them start to use their macros kind of less and less. Um, and we have been kind of broad as a startup to say, look, we work in the clinical setting. You have a clinical setting. Um, it, it most likely we can capture the important data for you, but we'll change a little bit of the templates. Um, and the information that you need to kind of capture, you know, and make it a little more customable. So, um, for example, we spoke to a large uh, radiology group. So they're looking at a lot of different images. They have like kind of 10 different templates that they were looking at. That's not something we originally implemented and say, okay, you know, these are the images that I'm explaining and I'm describing. So there's a, a good bit of workload there, but it's almost, you know, it's the the ability to to adapt um, and change that sort of stuff all becomes pretty easy because um, in in the end they're they're just speaking freely and we can kind of take that cognitive load off of them. Interesting. Adam, what would you add and, and maybe dive into some of the accuracy, you know, to Sean's previous point, you know, when you make a mistake, it, it's either the more work for the doctor after or even worse, you know, if it makes it into the record, it could be a problem. So, you know, to extend, you know, the clinician stuff and then talk about how you guys approach and how you measure accuracy of your solution. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but so basically, uh, when it comes to speech to text, we have like right now, speech to text, uh, we are pretty accurate, right? Like the whole world is at like almost 100% accuracy, especially with like AI, understanding most of the technical terms and our our, our uh, AI is also built on like some of the medical terms and like it's been trained and like uh, I had some uh, extensive training on medical terms. So picking up words is not an issue. Uh, the accuracy, what comes is like, obviously with the ICD and CPD code generation and also like some data, uh, if the data is going to the right bucket according to their wishes, right? Uh, into their uh, current current templates, um, means it's like a little bit customization required for every doctor right now. Uh, like Sean was saying, every, every doctor has their own computer templates and they've been used to some template structure for a long time now, like for 20 years they've been doing the same template structure. Uh, they're, there's a resistance to change initially. So we are like building templates for them. Uh, and they're still using those macros. So macros like, uh, we're just comparing with the notes of their previously generated. Like we are obviously comparing uh, how we are measuring accuracy is like, we're comparing the notes generated by AI versus what the notes they're writing. And we're seeing the accuracy. Like I often say that like our, AI is better because right now most of the 
EHR's notes that are there are like garbage. Like they're just copy paste from the previous previous records, and like you have like ninety percent of the information that's like just similar. Like if you see the notes that's been written down, like people have become lazy and they've found out shorter ways to write these uh, EHR information. But what happens with ambient is like we are ambient uh, listening is like uh, is basically we are listening to the conversation with the patient and doctor and doctor is able to concentrate on the patient and uh, worry about the patient more than his uh, EHR note generation. Um, uh, which actually, which which is what doctor is supposed to do. Uh, <laughs> That's so, what they wish they came into med school for. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't know anyone that likes the minutiae of documentation in their job, right? So <laughs> I think that that's true for doctors. Sean, anything you'd add for accuracy? Uh, you know, and, and talk about specialty. I mean, you, you kind of alluded to it with the radiology instance. Does this work for every specialty? Is there different accuracy across specialty? You know, are you just focusing on primary care? You know, how you yeah, so we're, we're right now, we're kind of <clears throat> mainly our product fits very well with primary care. Um, we're starting to explore different sorts of specialties, but when you start to do that, you go, okay, I need to start um, training different kind of models or developing different sort of things for certain specialties. And you don't really want to move too away from that. So um, we kind of have a, a pretty good idea of where we want to focus on, on a certain market segment. But anyone that's in the clinical setting that's doing any sort of uh, clinical conversations, it, you know, it could be an oncologist. They're having a lot of clinical settings. It could be, um, you know, a, a pediatrician. Um, it could be, you know, just the, the family practices. That all fits into something that we're doing and we're seeing the um, kind of rapid part of the scribing. The CPT code, um, what we have built on that aspect is across every specialty. So we have put, you know, we're, we're developing it across the whole board. Um, and we'll see how that might be implemented um, in a kind of different medium. Um, so that's that can be broad because it is, you know, every single thing. And um we can get that to 100% accuracy if you have to answer a few questions. So if some information is missing, generally, you can kind of get it on, on a handful of questions that the provider would have to answer. Um, and if we can make that, you know, down to one question or two questions or just, you know, a, a verbal response on five questions, we can see um, 100%. So, so we are also making sure that the right CPD and ICD codes are used so that you're not overcoding or undercoding, right? So if you're picking a CPD code, you want to make sure that all the data for that CPD code is in is is already recorded or like we have collected it. So we make sure if there's some information missing, we have a questionnaire that comes up saying, oh yeah, can you answer this question? Uh, that's like, it's all real time. Uh, it happens like, within 30 seconds of the conversation being done. Um, Interesting. And can you apply that to a text-based record or does it have to be a voice uh, record that you pull all that data from? Uh, it, so information we are collecting after the conversation is done is like text-based. Uh, mm -hmm. It could be voice-based too, but text, it's just like simple questions. It's like how long the, how long was, like so question could be like, how long was the conversation? Like sure. if we can't just depend on the size of the conversation they had on, our platform. It could be something they talk like they have. They might have had a ten-minute conversation before they started the recording as well. So we want the exact number. Like that's a that's an example I'm giving you. Uh, so it's like typing in two couple of numbers into the text feed. Interesting. Uh, uh, but yeah, like, like we have you know, to be accurate. We need to make sure we have all the data. So. And this data is only possible if we collect all the data. <laughs> Making sure we collect the right data for every CPT code. Yeah, it's interesting. It's almost like an AI coach for for billing. Uh, it's pretty interesting. It makes sense. Uh, you know, I think we've we've seen that as we you know as I've interviewed a lot of the people. 
that ambient clinical voice is just the beginning, you know, whether it's the billing, whether it's clinical decision support, whether it's ACO value-based care guidelines, you know, those are all going to be integrated into the experience, I think, as we move forward. Well, I, I appreciate yeah. you all taking time to to share this with us. Uh, you know, it's interesting you mentioned there's a demo people can get. I'm sure that's what people are going to want to know about and get their hands on it themselves. Where can people go to learn more and, uh, you know, obviously get a demo? Yeah, they could go to our website, medvice.ai, and uh, and just click with a sign up button and enter a phone number. And, and they'll get set up with a free account and not have to, to reach out. But um, if they want, they can also always email us at um, info at medvicecorp.com. They can give us a call, 727-222-4521. Um, we'll, we'll pick up. Um, and they, um, you know, or they can fill out a, a contact form on our website. But we're happy to talk to kind of any doctor any anyone in the medical field at any time we love learning about kind of the, the pain points that they have or the solutions that they're trying to trying to solve and um you know we we talked to a lot about what our our flow looks like but i just wanted to touch on one point there's there's been a lot of requests to and we're always open for it for people just to integrate medvice kind of in the background of of whatever they're they're built um and we're, we're seeing a lot of success there too so um you know if if someone's more on the technical side and, and looking for for kind of integrations we're happy to discuss that as well awesome got them any final thoughts yeah and you can probably look at our uh, youtube pages for like demos or uh, we have a medvice ai youtube page uh, we'll keep coming up with content there. Uh, um, you'll find what new releases we have. We have like releases like every couple of weeks, which we give, bring out to the market. So, and well, yeah, feel free to contact us. Like, yeah, you can, yeah, like Sean mentioned, like just go on our website. You, It's very easy to contact us. Yeah. Well, I'm excited for you, Gotham, that now your friends will uh, get out of the office quicker so they can spend more time hanging out with you, right? I think that was why you designed. <laughs> no, that's, <laughs> <the whole point>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's awesome. I appreciate you both taking time to share about medlife.ai and, uh, you know, sharing all your approach to uh, solving these challenging problems. And thanks, everyone, for watching and listening. If you want to find more great healthcare IT content like this, be sure to check it out at healthcareittoday.com or search for Healthcare IT Today on your favorite podcasting applications. Thanks, guys. Thanks, John. Thank you, John.